let us continue with our lesson and today in this lesson let's go and learn about the kotlin recursive function or recursion and also a tail recursion so let's go and see in a practical way what is a kotlin recursive function so by the recursive function we means that a function calling itself so when a function is calling itself from its uh, method body then it is known as a recursive function if you notice over here i have created one function over here and the function name is a get fibonacci number and if you see in the method body we are calling the same function from its method body so that's the recursive function that we are talking about over here and the function the name is get Fibonacci number and if you are not worrying about what is a Fibonacci number then you can say that a Fibonacci number is a series of a, a sequence of a number that each number in this sequence is a sum of the preceding number so which means that each number each number in this sequence is a sum of the preceding number so if you notice over here 0 plus 1 is 1 and uh, 1 plus 1 is 2 and uh, 1 plus 2 is 3 and 2 plus 3 is 5 5 plus 8 is 13 so it's a sequence of number uh, and each number in the sequence is the sum of the preceding number so that's the fibonacci number we are calculating over here and this method takes us three parameters over here we can say uh, n a and b so n number of time you can pass any number over here which is an integer value and we have a two parameter of a and b which is of big integer so if you are if you are not familiar with big integer big integer is another kind of uh, data class it's coming from if it's java that math class as a big integer type and this big integer why we are taking over here is it can take a very large number compared to the integer it can hold a very large number compared to the integer that's why we are taking a big integer over here suppose if you pass a very big number over here then the fibonacci number will hold a very large number like a very large number that's why we need to take a big big integer over here and over here i'm just simply logging it out i'm just uh, doing the sum over here a plus b and logging it out and the return type we are just returning the return type is a big integer that's why we need to return some big integer value over here and uh, return is if n is equals to equals to zero which means that if n is zero already then we'll return a which is a a value over here and uh, otherwise we will go and call the same fibonacci our get fibonacci method over here which is a recursive function and we'll pass a n minus 1 which is first let's say we pass a 7 so i'm just calling a method over here can you get fibonacci i'm passing the first number as first value as a 7 and second is 0 and 1 so 0 and 1 and a 7 so 7 means that n minus 1 should be 6 and uh, 0 plus 1 should be 1 and we are setting the value of a b again as a a so a a plus b which is one so it, we should pass a six and here it's a plus one which will be of a zero plus one which is of one and also one over here and second it will again go and call the same function uh, n minus one which means six minus one should be again go over here as a five and uh, one plus one it should be two over here and again two so that's what we two and the value of a is one so that's why we are just looping over over again and again calling over here and if you just put a breakpoint over here and if you try to make a debug over here just run it as a debug and let's go and see what it's actually trying to do over here then you will have a more understanding over here when we do a breakpoint so let's try to do a breakpoint over here and maybe we just break point in the down that may be too that may be too slow if we do run a method break point. just disconnect and let's try to do a breakpoint so yeah 
and uh, you can see that we are passing number of seven uh, first parameter as uh, seven zero and one then we should get a zero plus one and if you see the f8 in the keyboard and you should get a you go to the next value you can see six one and zero and again let's call the same function it's got five one and one right and uh, let's call again let's go to four two and one yeah and three three and two and it should be two five and three and finally one eight and five and it's the last which is of zero thirteen and eight if you go over, over over here then it should return zero that should end our method call so that's a simple recursive function over here and we can just run it and if you go over here and what we can do over here is a tail recursion tail recursion in kotlin we can make use of one keyword which is a method modifier we can just say call it tail recursive so what does this tail recursive because you method modifier does is that is it tells the compiler to optimize the recursion otherwise what it it may happen is that if your number over the number over you pass over here it may get a, you pass a very large number over here and the recursive function will run 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 and it may have a stack overflow exception so which may get which may explode your a stack memory and you have a limited stack memory and it may get a very large number which may not be stored in your stack memory so with a tail recursive function that the compiler will optimize our recursive function and that's the useful thing with a tail recursive so i think that's all for this lesson and i i would like you guys to go and practice it and if you have any more question on it do let me know we'll continue with our lesson on the next video till then have a great day